the most objective thing is the baby not gaining weight. So I say that because parents and mothers, um, they often rely on non-objective findings like my breasts might not be leaking as much as they were initially. Does that mean my supply has gone down? Um, that really just means your breasts have really accommodated how much milk is being produced, right? It's a big deal in being for the first two weeks where your breasts are like, what's going on? And there's all this milk producing and they don't really have a, you're so sensitive to the baby's letdown and um, cry reflex. So just because you don't feel your breast leaking doesn't mean your supply has gone down. It's just that your breasts have really begun to accommodate that. And so have your ductules. Some, ba some women are worried that their supply is low because the baby's fussy. Fussy during the day or fussy in the evening. Unfortunately, babies fuss a lot. And evening is that witching hour, but that doesn't mean that your supply is just low. Sometimes, yes, absolutely, in the evenings, your breast might be producing lesser amounts, but, but that's not to say that your supply is low in general. Other things that moms sometimes fixate on, they worry about frequent nursing. So unfortunately, frequent nursing and cluster nursing is part of the game. So that's not necessarily because you have a supply issue. Sometimes when there's bottle preference or use of nipple shields, that can be um, cause for moms to worry about supply issues. But one of the first things I always say to think about is, um, how is the baby gaining weight? It's not just you know how your breasts are leaking or how the way your breast feels after is the baby gaining weight. So doing a you know if you have a lactation consultant um, appointment in front of you and you can take a look at the baby, we can assess the latch and then see a feed take place and then we you, we assess for transfer of milk too. So we do a weighted feed. We call it a weight before and a weight after, and we can see how milk's been transferred. And that's one of the first ways we can know that, okay, baby is getting milk, is the baby gaining weight thereafter? Let's talk about this because I used to find formula incredibly confusing while I was in my residency for pediatrics. And I don't think it really clicked to me until it all came together and I was forced to learn it as a mom. So first of all, there's three big companies. Um, so Enfamil, Similac, and Gerber. And there's some European countries and organic companies. Earth's Best is another one, but those are the three big ones. If you go to any grocery store, you'll probably see something like Similac, Enfamil, or Gerber. Now within those, you're gonna find what we call sort of your regular formula for any baby, and they'll all have some different different strands of each one. Some of them will have gentle ease for the colicky baby. Some of them will have um, something for the acid reflux baby. Some of them might have something that says we add DHA and ARA, which we'll talk about, you know, fatty acids for the baby's brain. But those are the three typical formulas, and then they each have sort of their subset of those particular things that we just talked about. One thing to know is before any formula hits the market, they are all approved by the FDA. So I always recommend when parents are switching around formulas, just kind of let your pediatrician know too, because sometimes switching around formulas isn't the best thing for you or the baby because it does take a little bit of adjusting and getting used to. And sometimes it just causes extra stress if you're going between one formula or the other, not to mention these formulas can be kind of expensive. So almost all formulas are all FDA approved before they hit the market. Now let's talk about ingredients of formulas because I know some parents when they turn them on they're like wow there's so many ingredients. Well you're right because there are things to kind of preserve the formula on the shelf. They all have expiration dates. These aren't things that are okay for years and years and years. They all have expiration dates as they should. So you might see things like lecithin or carrageenan or monoglycerides or diglycerides and all there to sort of preserve the shelf life. And again, you'll see very similar things that would also be in breast milk, sugars like lactose, um, things that really help keep it, again, preserved and safe on the shelf. So when it comes to formulas, usually I tell parents, unless your pediatrician says otherwise, it's totally okay to start with the regular old, you know, let's say um, Similac, Similac Advance. Let's just say, you know, the regular old formula. And then if things get complicated, like let's say your child has a cow's milk protein allergy and they can't tolerate lactose, we can switch things around and go to what we call a partially hydrolyzed formula. 
And all that means is it breaks the proteins down just slightly to make it a little bit more easily digestible for the baby. I don't really switch around things without talking to the pediatrician though, because as these formulas get more advanced, the cost does increase. So sometimes your pediatrician can help you out with coupons. Sometimes even when it's really um, a need for something more advanced, we can actually even give you a prescription so we can get it covered for you if needed. But we need to know first if this is something that you're doing at home. Again, there's situations where babies have severe acid reflux and we move to something called extensively hydrolyzed. And then those proteins, I like to think they're broken down even more so to make it even easier for the baby to eat. So those are kind of the three ranges that we see all three companies, Similac, Enfamil, and Gerber falling into. So if I haven't confused you enough already, that's the way I kind of try to categorize things. And so as you can imagine, when I first walked to a formula shelf and I had no idea what I was doing, I was so confused. But now when I kind of keep that in the back of my head and think about the companies and each company makes basically the same thing, but names it a little differently, it makes me feel a little better. Um, now you might see other things like ARA or DHA added in. So those are polyunsaturated fatty acids. So that is important when it comes to neuronal development. Now some formula companies have started adding this in, which is totally fine. Um, you can absolutely add it in. It won't necessarily give your baby an extra benefit or your baby won't be at a loss if you don't choose that formula. But I just want parents to know that that's basically what it means. So when you see something advertised that way, um, it's, they say it's to help with neuronal development. Absolutely, polyunsaturated fatty acids can, but they can also get that from mom's diet if you're nursing as well. So that's kind of the 411, a little bit on formulas. Um, but I let parents know that just, you know, talk to your pediatrician beforehand because we can probably help guide you when it comes to these decisions.